Welcome to our gas tax part two video. Uh, we're making a part two because we got some really good feedback on our first video and we wanted to make sure that we are responding to said feedback. And we always appreciate the feedback. Right, we always, you know, I, we do this show very much off the cuff most of the time, so we're going to get things wrong here and there. We're going to, who knows, maybe, maybe, either way, it's good to respond. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. we, we do a lot of this pretty much just whatever we feel like talking about that day, that's what we talk about. Yes. Um, now, obviously, we do our research here and there where it needed to be, but uh, typically it's not specific for an episode. It's just kind of for our own our own purposes a lot of times. Our so. own giggles. Um, anyway, so this is Gas Tax Part 2. Um, in our first video, if you haven't seen that, we'll link that down below somewhere. I'm sure Brett will do something incredible for that. Down there. Somewhere. Um, so in the first one, we just talked about the uh, new 45 cent gas tax that's being proposed in the state of Michigan. Um, we just kind of talked about how we both felt that was pretty ridiculous. And uh, Oh, I didn't tell you that Mrs. Whitmer responded to my... Uh, oh, did she? Yeah. Really? So I, I followed the, the link that is in the other video, and I sent my we'll link that in this one as well yeah i sent my opinion email to her and basically told her about how i felt it was akin her her plan was akin to a i think i said a 10 year old using his college savings to go buy candy <laughs> and i said i asked her how she can justify being a part of the Democratic Party when the Democratic Party is all about helping poor people get out of poverty. At least they say that's what it's about. And she just ignored everything I said. Yeah, and it's because you got a canned response from an administrative assistant. Right, <laughs> and just threw all this BS at me about how, oh, it's it's all these hidden taxes and all this... Uh, I. I it was it was longer than that, and it I, I oh my god I was disgusted. A hidden tax? What do you mean, like? Like the the thing that I talked about how, oh she did say oh we'll we'll be giving tax cuts during um, when you do your taxes next year blah blah blah. And I'm like, why can't I just not pay for it now rather than right. get taxes back later? Right. How hard is that? <laughs> so stupid. I mean, in thinking about this, you know, since our last video, to me, this whole gas tax proposal to me is akin to uh, like if I bought a rental house, if I owned a rental house, let's say, and I and I gave it over to a property management company. Right. Mm -hmm. And I paid them every month for the last 10 years. And then I went over to check out my rental house and it's like a wreck. Mm -hmm. Like it is destroyed it, like it, it's it's basically unusable, and I'm like, what happened? I've been paying you money to maintain this thing for like ten years, and their and and their response was, oh well, we spent like we we see we took your money, and we put it in our bank account, which is where we take everybody's money, and but we had to spend most of your money on other stuff. It got spent. So, <laughs> what we're gonna need you to do, is we're gonna need you to pay us like the entire purchase price of your house again so that we can get it all fixed because it's so bad now <laughs> that it, I mean, we're better off just literally building a new house. Mm -hmm. But we're going to need you to pay for that. Mm -hmm. okay. Your response would be, okay, here's my lawyer's phone number <laughs> and uh, you'll see me in court. <laughs> Not, oh yeah, here, let me get my checkbook out. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's kind of what we're talking about here. We've been paying this gas tax for... However, whatever it's it was, it's been twenty six and a half cents. I think since like twenty fifteen or so, it was like nineteen something cents prior to that. It was lower prior to that. Basically, we've been paying this money not just in gas tax, but in license plate fees and all this other stuff for years and years and years, and it's been going into the general fund, getting spent on a bunch of other nonsense. Because as soon as you give the government money. They're going to spend it on something. And then as soon as you try and say, well, I want that money back. I don't know. You can't have that money anymore. The response is always, oh, my God. Well, you can't you can't cut this. You can't cut it. We've been spending money on that. Oh, my God. What will happen? People all, will die. All, right. All the plants are going to die. <laughs> like, you know, you, you, you can't cut it now. You already started giving me the money. 
You know, and it's like, no, that's not how this works. We were or at least that's not how this is supposed to work. We were surviving without it before. Right. And you made up stuff to throw money right. at Right, because, so, long story short, um, we have a couple specific things to respond to because we had some, like I said, some good comments on the last one. Uh, so, one sort of revision we'd like to make is uh, we were under the faulty assumption in the last video that it was going to take about $2 billion to fix it. Apparently, that is not the case. Uh, the proposal is $2 billion per year, which we do understand that, uh, you know, we kind of were spitballing ideas in the last video about how, obviously, if it's $2 billion a year, the kind of ideas we were throwing around wouldn't wouldn't fix that issue if that, if it you know, if it's truly going to cost that much, thing. you know, if it was two billion total, then it could have. Um, so, in response to that, we've I, I, I sat down and I kind of was thinking about, okay, so what's a what's a better plan? And I came up with an idea, and I'm sure it's something that's been talked about in other places. I'm sure people have mentioned it or something like that. And I know that there are issues with actually implementing this, um, but. To be honest, I, I think the obvious answer to this is we have this thing in Michigan. If you're not from Michigan, you don't know. Uh, we are the only state in the union uh, that has a catastrophic car accident fund, basically. So uh, our car insurance rates are like are, are very high in the state of Michigan. I don't want to. I've heard people say double, but I right. don't. I don't want to say specific numbers, but they're much much higher in the state of Michigan than they are in other places and a, a large por portion of that is because we have this fund uh, where basically if you get into any kind of catastrophic car accident the fund effectively pays for your care for life so which on the face of it sounds good right which sounds <laughs> yeah exactly sounds great sounds you know oh my god yeah paid that sounds amazing but obviously just like we always talk about just like everything else that money has to come from somewhere it doesn't just magically show up um but what's interesting about this is this fund has currently and uh this is based on uh, a, an audit that was done by plant moran and we'll leave a link in the description for that uh, this fund has around 21 22 billion dollars cash on hand sitting there. sitting in it because we've all been paying into it for so long that it's grown to that size. And you might say, well, if you're going to take care of people for life, it's going to cost a lot of money. And that is true. But the reality is, if you look at the money that goes in, money that comes out, basically the fund increases by about $500 million every year because they spend about a billion and a half and they bring in about $2 billion every year. Mm -hmm. in in coverage so as of now if you take that number if you stopped putting money into it tomorrow and that's not what i'm proposing here if you, if you stopped putting money in it tomorrow you would have about 20 years worth of money at current spending and i unless the entire state lower state of michigan you were to get in a car accident tomorrow, and now you had, I don't see how all of a sudden that number is going to increase dramatically. You know, I'm just thinking, can you imagine how much money they could get if they started putting that in? Like, I know, like, oh, I'm sure they do again. I, I'm sure that money is not simply sitting cash on hand, I'm sure it is gaining interest, gaining somewhere. interest somehow. I, I'm sure, you know, again. The I am not an accountant. I'm not, you know, an expert on these things anyway. I, I just kind of looked through the audit and, uh, you know, read some other pieces of people writing about it. And, yeah, so I, I'm sure, again, that it's not like they have a Scrooge McDuck vault filled with dollar bills or something like that. But the money is available is the point. Now, when I, I say available, the problem with this plan is that there are a lot of roadblocks. You can't just go in there and take the money out because they've set up things to protect it, which uh, to be honest, I, I like mm -hmm. because that's what I want with money that goes to the government. I want it put aside for something specific that it's supposed to be for. And I don't want it to be easy to simply go and take the money and use it for something else because that's what's gotten us in this problem in the first place. Mm -hmm. But to me, it makes a lot of sense um, to use this money um, simply because of where it comes from. I mean, because at the end of the day, 
the money is being spent by people who have car insurance, right? So mm. that means they're driving. It means they're driving on the roads. That means the roads are something that is important to them. So it's not like you're taking money from, I don't know, something completely unrelated. Pancake insurance. You know, exactly. And, and using it to fix the roads. You're taking it from a fund that, that is specifically designed to take care of drivers and, you know, that get in car accidents. Um, so again, I'm not proposing stopping putting money there. What I'm proposing is you do a one-time withdrawal of $10 billion. You put that into, and effectively, again, I am not a legislator. I am not, you know, I don't know the mechanics of all these things or how it works. Um, again, I know there are roadblocks to this, and I know especially like the, the lawyers... And the ambulance chasers and stuff like that, they protect this thing because it is their baby. It's their money. <laughs> that is, I mean, oh my God, that pays for all of their $4 million beach houses and everything else. So mm -hmm. they don't want anyone taking the money out. So they're going to fight real hard to keep it in there. So who knows? It may be impossible. The point is, there's $22 billion just sitting there that the taxpayers of the state of Michigan have paid through insurance that could be used to fix this giant problem rather than dumping another tax on top of them. Mm. So, like I said, my proposal would be you take $10 billion out of that fund, you create a new category, effectively, maybe, within the transportation fund or something like that, that is specifically for road and bridge construction and maintenance. That money goes directly in there. It can only be used for that kind of stuff. And then you have a $10 billion cushion at that point to do all of those immediate maintenance things that need to happen right now. Like we know, the roads are super bad. So, you know, I know they're talking about $2 billion a year over like the course of 20 years and stuff like that. I know that that's $20 billion. That's a lot more than $10 billion. The point is, it's a jumping off point. Mm -hmm. If you had $10 billion tomorrow, it's not, like, it's not like the roads magically get repaired as soon as you have the money. It takes time to make those repairs. Mm -hmm. So, But if you have a lot of money to begin doing so, then at that point, I would also propose that the gas tax as it stands now, or even possibly a reduced gas tax in the future, would be set aside into that same fund that you've created with the $10 billion in it. And the $1.5 billion that we pay in gas tax a year continues to go in that fund. So now... You have the money to once the road because because to me the biggest part of the problem here is the roads got so bad that now it's like my example of the, the rental house it has gotten so bad more money is required that it now, now requires exponentially more money to fix it than it did if you would have just maintained it to begin with and time right because now you have to shut down entire you know, 10 mile stretches of roads or freeways or whatever, because they just need to be completely repaired. Whereas if you had maintained them, it wouldn't cost you nearly as much money and labor and time to do it. So the one and a half billion a year from the gas tax going directly specifically to that, rather than going to the general fund would be how you then maintain the roads that get fixed with the $10 billion and continue to fix the roads. And that I think, I think would bring us into a much better position Mm -hmm. than we're currently in. Um, so that's kind of our new proposal. I hope that kind of fixes some of the some of the issues that maybe people had with our first video. Um, I still think the 45 cent gas tax is ridiculous. I think it's insane. Yeah, because that put us to 60 something. Yeah, I, that's, <laughs> again, that's insane. I go back to the point of when you have taken this money over so long and mismanaged it so badly, no, I'm not going to just sit here and be okay with you saying, well, we're going to take a whole bunch more money, and I, I, promise, I promise, I swear we're going to do it the right way this time. And this is not a partisan thing, okay? No, whoever's it, it, doing that this, doesn't This has been a problem it. for 20, 30 years. We've had Rick Snyder, a, a, a Republican. We've had, you know, Granholm. We have Angler. We've had Whitmer now. We've The, the Senate and the House has changed back and forth. This is not a partisan issue. This is a politician issue. Politicians get elected by saying, I'm going to do all these great things for you, but they never, apparently people never remember the fact that doing all those things means I have to take money from you to do mm -hmm. that, right? So, yeah, it's been mismanaged by everybody we've elected forever, and it's just, it's a problem that needs to get fixed, but I'm not willing to just throw more money at it, right? Um 
so that was the one big uh, one that we had. The, the second part of it was, okay, well, obviously, if you're going to take the one and a half billion out of the general fund and put it directly in a different fund, then you have to figure out what you're going to cut. And to me, this was easy. <laughs> like that didn't that didn't bother me one iota. But uh, we had a we had a subscriber who was very adamant that you know people make these claims all the time, but they, they he wants to tell okay, well, what are you going to cut? And something that I said, I think, before we started filming was just that it's like, or maybe, maybe we did talk about this a minute ago. It, it's like you, once you give them money, it's like they, they start doing stuff with it, and then you're like, okay, and well. Then they protect it like this. Yeah, I, I don't want you to have this money anymore. Why? No, hold on. I want this back. Well, it's like, well, you can't you're take it back now. Look lives. at all these things that we did with it. <laughs> so anyway, this, was, this would have been pretty easy for me, but for you, my wonderful subscribers, our wonderful subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tried to be at least, you know, because I could have just gone through and said, yeah, just cut Medicaid whole, whole hog. And that would have been enough right there. Done. But <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be a little more rational about it. I tried to stay away from things that I know that people like and want to keep. You know, I didn't, I didn't cut anything from like the police budget, the fire budget. I tried to kind of, like I said, stay away from things that I know people are going to have visceral reactions to. But you can't do that with everything because people are going to have, that's the point. People are going to have, you're talking about people's jobs, right? Mm. You're talking about firing people. I understand that. In these cuts, people are going to get fired. Lots mm. of people are going to get fired because that's a lot of what this money is. But I think to me, the point is you, you, sh you can't get mad at the accountant who says you can't afford this. You get mad at the boss who hired you even though, and, and didn't think that, didn't take into account that he can't this. afford you. Yeah. Right? Like, if you lose your job, that sucks. But, like, it's not the fault of the accountant that said, yeah, we can't afford this. This is stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the fault of the person who was just like, oh, we have money? Hire 12 people. <laughs> right? You know? Um, so I'll just go through these real quick. Um, I just, I uh, just so you know where I got this information, I took the... 2018 published state of Michigan budget, which is about $58.6 billion in total, uh, not just the general fund, obviously, that's the total budget. But all of these things that I'm going to mention are specifically, it's broken down in the budget to what, for each one of these things, what's coming out of the general fund and what the gross is. So basically what they have a specific budget for that thing. Um, sometimes it's the exact same number because all the money comes from the general fund. Sometimes it's not. Um, but for the most part in here, these cuts are a from the, uh, they are entirely from the general fund, but they're not all entire cuts. So like sometimes I only cut a little bit and there's still going to be general fund money on top of whatever their budget is going to this. So, so you're taking, you're cutting from only general fund. Money. Yes. All of these are, are only general fund money. Cause that's what we're talking about. It's 1.5 billion that goes into the general fund. And if mm -hmm. we're going to pull that out, then we got to cut 1.5 billion in spending. So um, yeah, so I, I guess I'll just quick run through these. I, I basically just started at the beginning of the budget and moved through it. Uh, so first of all, I got $3.2 in general fund money that's going to food and agriculture subsidies. Now, uh, we've stated before, I think, and if not, I, here it is, I, I don't really believe in subsidies in general for for businesses or if it can't like survive right. on its own why are we throwing money at right. it right exactly if it's not viable <laughs> on its own why are we throwing money at it and and again like i said 3.2 million in general fund spending there's a whole budget beyond this 3.2 million that's going towards the same thing mm -hmm. so i'm only we're not cutting the entire budget for food and agriculture subsidies we're just cutting the 3.2 million from the general fund um, this one I just cut That's whole hog favorite. from the general fund, which is horse awards and fairs, three hundred thousand um, dollars. Listen, I'm going to be honest. I, I like, I get it. I'm sure people like the state fair and like horse awards and racing awards and stuff. Um, but again, this is just three hundred thousand dollars from the general fund. There's like three million dollars in no just normal. It has its own funding, so. I think I think they can do without the three hundred thousand dollars from the general fund. Mm -hmm. They got three million dollars for horse awards and fairs. If it were up to me, I'd cut it entirely. So they were getting three hundred thousand from the general fund, specifically. Yes. Why does that even matter at that point if they're already getting three million? Who knows? From... It could be 
it could be a lot of reasons. Again, the, the budget that you can sort of pull up on the Michigan.gov is a very general budget. Um, it doesn't, like, break down exactly what is spent on what. It's mm-hmm. just that, again, which is part of the issue. It's like when you look at this, it's like, oh, my God, like, look at these numbers. I can't even fathom what this is getting spent on. Like, you can, but it's like, okay, you could cut it a lot more effectively if you were just like, okay, clearly we don't need 35 administrators to do this, so let's get, cut it to 15. Mm-hmm. You know, like, if I could get that specific, I would, but it, it's a kind of a general budget, so... I'm just going off of that. Um, so uh, the next one was community college support. And I know everybody's yelling right now. <laughs> okay, I'm not cutting all of the community college support. I'm cutting $3.2 million in general fund spending on community college. And I, I even put right in here, because I know people are going to not like this, does not cut their current budget of $392 million to support uh, community college. It only cuts the general fund spending. So again, I think $392 million is plenty to get by with if it means that we can have roads that are not not look like they're from the middle of Fallujah. Okay. Um, next one down, prisoner health care service. I'm going to oh, be honest, yeah. I really don't care about prisoners health care. I understand Mm-mm. that it's a human right at some point and you, they got to have something but you know what? I'm no. fully okay with the cut. I know you don't agree with that. But, but you, what, didn't we just talk about recently how healthcare is not a human right? Well, I suppose, yeah, not not a human right. But I, I understand that, like, you. I guess I personally don't agree with like just saying like, well, Left you committed rot. a crime, we're just gonna let you rot in okay. a hole. I like see what you you're know. Saying. You know, there is, I, I guess human dignity is a better way to put it. I'm glad you said that because okay. that is true. There is a human dignity standpoint of, I, I do absolutely believe in the rehabilitation model of prisons. And I, I will do a whole video on prisons at some point. I think it, it is a very broken system. Mm-hmm. But the point is, there's $320 million of general fund spending going into the prison health care services. I'm taking $20 million of it. Okay, I think they can get by with twenty million less. Okay, um, next one is child care subsidies. Again, I can hear you yelling already from your computer. Um, so this is one that again I, we've talked about in our personal responsibility video. We're talking about basically subsidies given to businesses that provide low income people with child care services so that they can still be able to work. Mm-hmm. And again. A lot of these things in the cuts are, you know, you're going to get mad. They're cuts. It's always going to hurt somebody. Mm-hmm. Like, I, that's just the way it is. But at the end of the day, I come, we come from the standpoint of if you can't afford to have a child, you probably shouldn't Don't. have a child. <laughs> so while I, I do understand that things happen and people fall on hard times and things like that, that is where, you know, your community and your family and things like that are supposed to fill those gaps. you not the state or federal government necessarily. Um, so again, so that's 8.4 million from the general fund and there's still uh, $18.8 million in money going to that f- it just from other sources. So again, we're not cutting that whole hog, it's it's just the general fund. Um, moving down the executive office funding, that's basically the funding for the office of the governor. Uh, the total is like $6.8 million. Personally, I don't understand why the governor and his staff and everything like that need $6.8 million. I'm sure there's lots of reasons and you could get, you could, you could go on for days about why he needs this and that and otherwise. Do you think that includes the governor's salary? I'm sure it does. But again, it's not broken down specifically in this gov- in this budget, so I don't mm-hmm. know. But I'm sure that it does. But again, you could argue, oh, he needs this, he needs that, he needs all this stuff. But you know what? When normal people cut their budgets because they realize that there's overspending, yeah, you, you got there are things that you don't need. And mm-hmm. you don't necessarily even realize that you don't need them until you have to get rid of them. Mm-hmm. And that's the point with government. As soon as they have something, everything's important. Mm-hmm. You can't cut anything because it'll make somebody mad. And whatever, I, I don't care about that. So we're going to cut $1.8 million from that, uh, bring it down to $5 million that still remains. I think that's plenty. Um, and then we get to the Health and Human Services budget, which, Ooh. my God, 
the amount of money that goes <laughs> into that is insane. So, like, the numbers I've been talking about, it doesn't seem like they're going to add up to enough. But trust me, here's where it gets good. So <laughs> the big piece this, of cake. this part of the budget is listed as other public assistance in health and human services. So it's not even specific at all. It's literally just other. It's the miscellaneous category of the budget. And I cut $130 million from it because... That, and that's a whole cut. That that's 130 million that was coming from the general fund. I cut that from that to zero mm-hmm. because there's still 316 million dollars in normal funding for something that is literally listed as other. <laughs> and I get it. Like sure, like sometimes you got to group things together in a general budget. But my God, I have a little specific. I think you can get by with 316 million dollars. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, the next one is one I know everybody's going to be mad about, and I don't care. <laughs> the Medicaid budget, $500 million is being cut from that from the general fund. And here's the kicker, $1.4 billion still remains in general fund funding for Medicaid, not to mention the $15.5 billion of normal funding they have. So they're still getting uh, $17 billion after I cut the $500 million. Listen, I think you can handle that. That is so I think much you can money. get by. With five hundred million dollars less, again, if it means we can have roads that don't look like they're from Fallujah. Mm-hmm. Um, so moving down, uh, health and human services, administrative and field operations. So what's that? Who knows? <laughs> it's basically three hundred million dollars for administrators and blah blah. And again, they have normal funding beyond the general fund money. So we're cutting three hundred million dollars from that because again, I think you can get by with your normal funding. Um, go, moving on, my favorite, university operations. So we're talking about U of M, MSU, Central Michigan, Western Michigan, all those universities. I'm cutting $400 million in general fund spending from that where they will, because actually pretty much all of the university operations budget comes from the general fund. So they get about $1.6 or so billion dollars total in total funding. About $1.4 of that is general fund. Uh, so I'm going to cut $400 million. You're still going to get a billion dollars plus a couple hundred million that comes from other sources in general fund spending to operate these universities who, by the way, charge tuition, charge, <laughs> charge tuition at, 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 you know, six to nine hundred dollars a credit hour times however many freaking students they have, have football teams that generate hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars for the university. I'm sure U of M generates billions. Insane, Just, right? Has yeah. has donor bases that generate hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars for the university. I think the tuition would be enough. Right, exactly. Like, I've told you between, about, yeah. Between all of that, why do you need my tax dollars to operate at this point? There may have been a time back in the day where the universities weren't qu- making quite so much money. Right. Where, yeah, sure, tax-funded public universities. But at this point, you don't need my money. I'll let the listeners do this math. I was in a, I went to MSU. I was in a marketing 101, whatever it was, class, and... Just my section had 500 kids in it, and that was a four-credit class. And back when I took that, four credits was like twelve or thirteen hundred dollars. So do the math on that. That's one section, one class, one semester. Right. <laughs> oh my God. And, and I mean, <laughs> you we could go on for days about park charging for parking and charging mm-hmm. for those universities are cash cows beyond belief. The smaller ones, maybe not so much. Mm -hmm. The smaller public universities, absolutely. I am primarily talking about U of M and MSU now. I just did a general $400 million cut. But I think the majority of that money should come from U of M and MSU. Mm -hmm. Because those are, you know, I I think when I looked at it, because they do break that down, actually, how much goes to each one. The U of M was like 300 and something million and MSU was like 275. That's like 500 million. So they're giving right more money to the school that needs it less. Well, and that's just Ann Arbor was 300 and something million. So oh, they right. have, they have Flint, Flint and, and Dearborn, and... and those had other like other money. So, oh my yeah, God. absolute insanity. I think there. taking $400 million is not a big deal. Uh, so those were some big chunks there. Now we'll get to some smaller chunks. Uh, there's a $2.4 million general fund for parks and recreation. Again, I'm not cutting the parks and recreation department. I'm cutting the general fund spending. The parks and recreation department still has lots of funding. 
Um, public school operations, 190 million I'm taking out from general fund. Again, the public schools are not losing all of their funding. They're simply losing some general fund funding. Um, then I have two that are kind of related. There's job creation and support subsidies and business attraction subsidies. Again, I'm not a fan of subsidies. I am pro business, but I am not pro government assisted business. I, I, propping up right, propping up for either reason. failing businesses or you know trying to because again they don't work. It's just like we had the movie industry subsidy here for a while. It's like okay, how much really did that do for us? And it was a temporary thing where some they shot some movies in Detroit. Some people got paid some money to be extras, and obviously yes, it, it absolutely increased uh, you know economic revenue and stuff in Detroit. And then the subsidy went away, and then. When was the last time you heard about a movie getting filmed in Detroit? I don't know. Exactly. They just went somewhere else. So <laughs> Subsidy is not supposed to stay there. <laughs> right. So it, it, I don't agree with, again, I think everyone needs to be on an even playing field. I think giving, you know, because at that point you're saying, well, we're going to give this business a bunch of money, and if your business doesn't fit exactly that model, well, we're basically giving your competitor an advantage mm -hmm. because f whatever the reason is, right? Um, and we can do a whole other video about that. We won't go into that now. Uh, so there's job creation and support subsidies at seventeen and a half million, and then business attraction subsidies, which again are like the movie subsidies, trying to get people to come here to create businesses. Uh, Fifty million is coming out of there. Um, occupational regulation and licensing. I think licensing is retarded <laughs> in general. For most things. Now, I, I do, I can understand reasoning for licensing. Like, like I specifically when I was looking at this about like uh, healthcare licensing, like be, having yeah. to be licensed to be a doctor and things like that. There are, there are licenses that I am okay with. This particular one seemed very vague and to me smelled of, you know, whatever. Having to get a license to be a massage therapist and having to get a license to be, so I, you know what, five million general fund. And again, there's funding for this outside of general fund. So five million from there is not a big deal. Then the last two are just the House of Representatives and the Senate budget. This one was funny because their budgets aren't that big in comparison to some of this other stuff. So I took $25 million from the House of Reps and $15 million from the Senate. Um, and that is largely salaries for both the actual representatives and then all of their, all of the operations people for all of that, which I found on the State of Michigan website. They actually, they update a monthly... Because I, I basically was trying to figure out, like, how much the reps get paid, like, what their salaries are. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of quick Googled, like, kind of a, a similar phrase to that. And, yeah, they actually update monthly. It's the full, like, uh, employee salary report for the House of Representatives and the Senate. And obviously there's no names or anything attached to it, but it just basically gives you an alphabetical list of titles. So, like, how many office assistants there are, how many administrators there are. And I swear to God, it's like four or five pages long of just scrolling and salaries, like just all this money. And I was like, yeah, I feel like we could lose a, a few of those administrators. I'm just going to be honest here. I feel, like, I feel like this is probably not necessary. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I cut $25 million from House of Reps, $15 million from the Senate. Again, these are not the end-all, be-all. I'm not saying this is the perfect... Uh, this was sort of my general overview of, of things as I saw it that kind of got me to where I felt like needed to be. Now, if I was actually a politician or a legislator, I would have access to much more detailed breakdowns of where things are getting spent, and I could give you a much more accurate. Uh, but I, currently, I don't have the time for that anyway, <laughs> because I am not a legislator. Right. Uh, but anyway, so the total of all those cuts comes up to $1.67 billion dollars. So I went a little bit over the $1.5 billion that was needed. I could have... So you I, even have some leeway Right, in that. there's some leeway in that. I could have I could have gone much farther. If it was just straight... If you were just like, okay, here's the budget in sum total. What would you cut? Because realistically, the, the, the state of Michigan budget for that year was like $58.6 billion, right? Mm -hmm. And technically, I haven't cut anything from that budget because I've technically just moved money mm -hmm. because it's still $58.6 billion. It's just the $1.5 billion is actually being spent on what it's supposed to be. So our taxes stay the same. Right. So, like, <laughs> the, the budget hasn't changed mm -hmm. per se. Like, I, it's not like I've cut $1.67 billion from the state of Michigan budget. I've simply taken 
billion and said, you don't get this anymore. It's going to go to what it's supposed to go to now. So I don't see any issue with that. Like I said, if you just handed me the budget and said, okay, what should we cut? I would have said, all right, let's see. Uh, Medicaid, $16 billion. Yeah. <laughs> Throw that out the window. Uh, oh, you know, university operations, $1.4 billion for universities that literally bring in hundreds of millions and billions of dollars. <laughs> Gone. I would have, we, I could have cut the budget from 58.6 probably to $40 billion if you had just said you can cut whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of our general response. Do you have any final thoughts or anything, anything you want to say? What's, what's funny is as, as you were reading through all this money, I was... I got, I got confused and thought. I had to remember this is just for this state. Right. Thinking like the or five hundred million. Yeah, the five hundred million dollars for Medicaid just for this state. That's yes. insane. So well, and the thing about the Medicaid budget too is that uh, they, you, they there's a bunch of federal funding involved there, and so I was kind of reading about that in the budget and. And basically, at least in, in the 2018 budget, Rick Snyder was kind of saying like, well, you know, the 200 million, they, he basically he was proposing taking an extra 200 million from the general fund for this Medicaid thing in his budget mm -hmm. of 2018. He's saying, well, that's going to be offset because if we do this, we'll be able to do that and we'll get more federal money. So, you know, it will offset the 200 million that I'm taking from the general fund. And I was like, okay. It, it, basically, his point was we'd have to take more from the general fund to pay for this than if we just take two hundred million and uh, there was some program involved in it where if they did this program, where then the feds they throw would more get money. yeah, where the feds throw more money at them. And it's like okay, so now we're just taking government money to pay for government money. It, it, it's like hey man, hey man, you pay federal income tax and state income tax, right? Uh huh. But cool, no, no, no. see, it's gonna cost us way less money because we're gonna take. We're only going to take two hundred million in state money, and we're going to take a bunch of federal money, so it's not going to cost you anything. And you're like, "Yeah, but I pay federal taxes too, so you just you're just taking my money from the federal government rather than rather than in state tax." Okay, Sweet. yeah, I don't see how that's better. Sweet. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we could the, go on for hours about this. Yeah, the the. The thing that disgusts me the most about learning this was the university operations thing. Yep. My God, those are economies in and of themselves. And to me, to Why me, do they need right, help? right. To me, three hundred million, like three hundred million dollars for U of M. That's not even that much money. Yeah. In the big scheme of things, it's like it's like right. It's like they have donors that like sneeze ten million dollars <laughs> in their pockets. Like, <laughs> you know, like right. I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's stupid. It's just insanity. Anyway, so. That's Michigan Gas Tax Part 2. Still think it's ridiculous. Still think you should contact Gret Gretchen Whitmer's office and tell her that you are not okay with this gas tax. I'm not okay with it. Brett's not okay with it. And you should not be okay with it either. If you are okay with it, you're fine with people taking your money and doing and whatever they think throwing it away. Right. Throwing it away because that's what they're doing. Just because you mismanaged our money before doesn't mean that now we have to give you more money for you to mismanage again. That's the, In a that's the overarching point. You know, we <laughs> responded to this very specifically because we had someone ask us some specific questions. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm not going to give you more money until you until we can figure out how to rein in the government spending. That, 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 that's it for me. So anyway, don't put Twinkies on your pizza like always. It's a bad idea. The cream gets all over the pepperoni and mixes Ugh. with the it mixes with the, uh, the the grease. It's just it's a bad idea. Cheese don't and do Twinkie it. bread. Ugh. Let us <laughs> let us be the ones to have tried it for you. Don't do it. All right. Have you tried? ICBTS it? out. <laughs>